It's podcast day. It's podcast day. Welcome in, friends. Welcome in. Some days you feel really well put together, and other days you don't. (laughs) Welcome to the Hey Brownberry YouTube channel. I'm very glad you decided to stop by here. It is an early Tuesday morning, and I'm sitting in my craft room, enjoying a few minutes of quiet time and I thought I would just record a couple of clips to tell you about some footage I took while sorting through notions. If you're a maker and you've been one for a while, it's likely that you've collected a few bits here and there to help you along in your making. Uh, Specifically, I found that with my knitting and my sewing, it's really easy to accumulate accessories, let's call them. Notions is a pretty broad term that can encompass the tiniest stitch marker to um, scissors, tape measure, and other pieces that help us along in our making. So I decided that it was time to face my stitch marker and progress keeper collection. I guess if you're like me, you have a significant number. I do have a few maker friends who do not have a collection of stitch markers and progress keepers, and they tend to use only the few that they need for their projects, but I am not one of those people. I have been fortunate to be gifted several of these over the years, and I've also collected some all on my own because they're cute and fun and they tend to add a little a little oomph to a project. Um, they're functional as well. If you use stitch markers for things like separating out repeats in a lace pattern or a color work uh, motif, they can be very useful, very functional, very helpful. And with progress keepers, those that are removable and can be applied during a, uh, that can be used during a, I'm having the hardest time with words. (laughs) Progress keepers are usually used in a project to mark off sections or to indicate a place in the pattern where you may be increasing or decreasing or some other uh, technique that you need to highlight while you're making. Again, very useful. They can also show you progress in a project. So you might apply one to your project because you're going to work on it for a period of time and you want to see that progress from where you've marked it to where you've reached. 
Um, so yeah, these two things tend to be very practical and I think the added bonus is that there are very creative makers out there who can also make them beautiful and special. I came to this thought that I needed to confront my stash of stitch markers and progress keepers because they fall into that category of out of sight, out of mind. I do have several containers and little dishes and bowls and things that I've used over time and I will just put a few here and there. Sometimes I'm good about keeping them near me for when I need them. Other times I'm not. They tend to be put on a shelf in my craft room or in containers that are closed and so I, I'm not looking at them all the time and definitely it makes it, it has made it easier to not really think about how many I have. I am back. Welcome home, honey. Thank you, my dear. What are you into? I've come to the realization that even though I have so many options for this one type of notion, I gravitate back to the same ones all the time. I may love a dangly stitch marker to look at, but it's not always practical when I'm trying to move rhythmically through a knitting row or round. And I find that with some stitch markers, if I have to fuss too much with just moving it along as I stitch, that really breaks my, it breaks the rhythm for me and I, I don't like that. <laughs> I am also a fan of progress keepers that are easy to clip on and off my stitching, easy to apply and remove. And again, though they might be cute if they're too heavy or if the method to clasp them onto my stitches is too fiddly, I tend not to use them as well. Like with many things, I find that the the realization moment of, well, I don't really like how this works will come, but I don't always do something about it right then. I may not even switch out that stitch marker for the next several rounds or rows, even though I have that moment of annoyance with it. And then there are times when I'm using something like that and I love how it works and it's so smooth and I have no problems with it, um, which should be a clue to me to say, hey, this is something that works for you. Maybe stick with it. What I decided this time around when reviewing what I have is to keep that in mind as I'm looking through the collection. And I just took some time at the kitchen counter to spread out all the ones I could find. I opened up containers, I dumped some of them out, and I realized that I've had stitch markers especially for years, over a decade. And some of them have never been used in a project. And I really want to move towards both a stash and a set of tools and materials that I use on repeat with no problem. Of course I want the flexibility to apply something new if a project calls for it, but at the heart of this review is having a baseline of things that I can use very often. So in dumping them out and seeing those deep, deep stash notions, uh, right away I could identify kind of a few categories. So there were stitch markers that either I had made or I had bought that were just no longer useful. Maybe a jump ring had fallen off or the clasp wasn't working. Shame-free zone. I'm not going to think too hard on why I still have those, but it was easy for me to put those to one side and say, okay, I'm either going to try to repair those myself, though I'm not a jeweler, or it's just time to let them go. And then there were those that 
as I look at them, I have that memory of using them in a project and knowing that they worked very well and they keep the rhythm for me. And so that segment would be definitely want to keep these. I use them often. And on top of that, I want to keep them together so that it's easy to reach for them the next time I need them. Um, there are a couple kind of middle categories. Uh, some progress keepers in particular that I just love to look at them. I They're functional, but I really enjoy the imagery on them and just want to have them around. Um, there are times when I even apply a progress marker to a project for its aesthetic, not necessarily to mark an increase or a decrease or a progress point, just because I want to look at it as I come to that part of the project. And so that was a, a kind of mid-category where it's not that I need it, but I love having it. And another middle category were some of those that were broken or not functional, but fixable. I've done a little bit of beading. I've made my own stitch markers in the past. I have pliers and jump rings and other things, other supplies for that. And so there were some that just needed a bit of repair, maybe uh, a new piece to be attached or taking off an old piece and replacing it. So that middle category was, if I can fix it, would I still want to keep it? So I just spent some time going through them. And uh, I, I'm going to be, full disclosure, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I have so many that after going through them and even separating them and spending time fixing some of them, I still was really uncomfortable with how many I had. There are some things that I collect that I have absolutely no guilt about. I have no um, bad feeling about the accumulation. And it turns out that this was not one of them. I was really uncomfortable with how many I had because in any given project, even in a large project with a lot going on, I still tend to use somewhere between two and at most maybe eight stitch markers. I could probably count on one hand the amount of progress keepers I might need even in a project that has things like a sleeve where I want to mark decreases. And so that discomfort felt like it it needed to be addressed. Um, and seeing everything out in front of me at once wasn't maybe the easiest, gentlest way to address that. I felt agitated doing it. Does that ever happen to you? <laughs> you go in with good intention to kind of sort out and clear. And I don't know, it just, it brings up something that is uncomfortable and agitating. And that's how I was feeling. My solution was, I need to sort through this in a way that's going to feel that's going to feel a bit more practical when I'm done. And that actually meant taking some of those things that were just no longer useful, either broken or didn't even look good enough to give away, let's say, um, and, and get rid of them, throw them away. I'm a person who has a really difficult time with throwing things out. I will try to put something through many cycles of reuse or repair before throwing it out. But these were small items and I didn't feel like there was another life for them. So I threw some of those away. And then I went through the others and sorted them into types, whether they were dangly or round stitch markers or progress keepers that were plastic that came from a previous interchangeable needle set. I just put similar types all together, because then I could look at them and say, in my mind, you know, when I'm doing this type of project, I do tend to reach for this type, and it would be good if they're all together. And uh, I ended up clearing a few containers. I went from having several containers with little bits here and there down to a few containers that all can, that all now encapsulate one type of this notion and a few empty containers. I was seriously tempted to try to find something to put into those empty containers. Like the way my mind works sometimes is a mystery even to me. The relief of having 
consolidated and sorted was there, but there was also this feeling of, well, now I have these empty containers. What can I put in there? <laughs> Something about space that just calls out for stuff. That's just, that's just what was going through the brain. I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I sorted through it. It seems like such a simple thing, and yet I came out of it feeling like there's value in confronting something like that, even though it seems small and maybe trivial. It was more about the the reflection, to use my 2020 word, 2021 word of the year. It was reflecting on how do I actually use this item? Acquiring them, I'm really good at. <laughs> But how do I actually use it, um, and how do I make it a part of a part of a process that has a bit more flow? So I appreciate this space to just talk through something that could definitely be considered small, but in the doing it felt bigger. And really looking at what do I need at hand was nice. It was worth the agitated feeling afterwards. So thank you for the space to share that with you. I hope you enjoy just a bit of imagery and a bit of time with me because I enjoy time with you. Thank you again for being part of my reflection journey. I am happily making a way on a project that came out of my works in progress basket. These are my whoops-a-daisy socks. I will link the information for this pattern in the description box below, but that's my current work in progress, a revived work in progress. I've been able to get both socks back on needles. <laughs> get them back on the go. I'm pretty happy about that. It's now back to being a pick it up and put it down kind of project, so that's good. I hope that your works in progress are also feeling good to you. And I will look forward to another chat with you another time. Thanks again for being here. I'll see you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.